We welcome you with another episode with Heroes of Faith, with His Grace Bishop Yusuf, the Bishop of the Southern United States Diocese. We thank you, Sayyidina, for being with us. Today we'll speak about a very prominent uh, character of the Bible, a one who was the only righteous man in the whole world who was in the evil life. And it's very apparent it's Noah. Uh, how you can live a righteous life when everything around you is going into an evil direction? Actually, Noah is a very good example to our time because we are faced with the question how to live a godly life in ungodly world uh, and here we can see how sin is multiplied and uh, became very very abundant around us but I think the, the key point in Noah's life is his relationship with God and through this relationship he was able to get his inner strength uh, that's why he was not influenced by all the people around him and he was able to be righteous and perfect in his generation his relationship with God was manifested when God actually told him build an ark and uh, because I will flood the whole world and building the ark actually took 120 years during this 120 years, the people mocked him, criticized him. But through his uh, relationship with God, his faith, his confidence in God, he didn't pay attention to all of this. He continued to build uh, the ark, to obey God's commandment, even when the people looked at him as crazy, out of his mind, he didn't pay attention to all of this. So. To answer the question how to live godly life in the midst of ungodly world is through your personal relationship with God. The more you are abiding in Him and trusting Him, confident in Him, uh, getting your strength from Him, the more you can resist the temptation of the world around you. Same happened with Joseph the righteous, same happened with Daniel and the three young men. All these people were able to bear witness to, to God in the midst of ungodly generation because of their personal relationship with God. But Sayyidina, I'm sure you, yeah, you, you find uh, when we live, when we have this very strong faith to be, not, to be, not to care about anything that happens around you or any criticism around us, it puts us in a situation of isolation. And it's a very difficult uh, thing to, to deal with. How we deal with that feeling that we are uh, isolated from the people around us. Uh, an example, if, if a youth in the middle of all his class, everybody is going their way and he will try to be very strong in faith and he will become by himself. How to deal with this, how to feel happy when you are by yourself? I remember I said to one of the youth who was complaining uh, from loneliness because all his friends doing ungodly things and he didn't want to associate with them. I remember I told him it is better for you to suffer from isolation from people rather than suffering from isolation from God. Living ungodly life will make me isolated from God. With the isolation from God, insecurity, fear, guilt, shame will enter my heart. But if I'm isolated from the world and ungodly people, uh, but I am abiding in God, I will have peace, joy. Uh, that's why St. Paul in his letter to Corinthians told us be separate go out from among them and 
the suffering from being isolated from men actually will be compensated by the comfort and the consolation of, of the Holy Spirit. Do you see, Sayyidina, that isolation comes as an internal feeling? I mean, um, I think before I feel isolated from everyone around me, I think I feel this isolation inside me. If I know who is with me, I will not be feeling uh, isolated. If I know how I'm very close to the saints and to God, this might overcome that feeling of isolation. How we can shift our mind from just seeing what's happening around you, uh, around us physically, to, to see what is happening inside us. Uh, again, uh, as you said, you know, it's my relationship with God, my relationship with the saints, my relationship with godly people. And, and many, many times, actually, uh, as the Lord said to Elijah, there are 7,000 uh, knees uh, wow. did not bow to bow. Uh, I'm sure we are not living in the, life, uh, in the time of Noah where eight persons were, uh, only were saved. I'm sure around us there are many, many godly people. Mm. But let me assume even if there isn't by anybody around us godly, uh, actually by abiding in God and abiding with the scenes and the cloud of witnesses around us, this will give us uh, this comfort in our hearts. Uh, the other alternative is very, very bad to be isolated from God. And here the right. person will be very, very miserable even if he is surrounded by uh, hundreds, uh, hundreds of people. I'm sure we heard about uh, famous uh, actors or actresses who are very, very popular uh, and they commit suicide. Why? Because uh, they were isolated from God. Yeah. So all the people around them were not able to give them the comfort. On the other side, we have hermits and unquiet living in real isolation from people, but they are very, very peaceful uh, from within. So we should value those who are with us more than those who are yeah. against it's us. It's like the royal family. Uh, you know, the, the prince and any person in the royal family, he doesn't mingle with, with everybody. He does not associate with everybody because he knows they are from the royal family. If you understand we are from the royal family of God, you know, so only we associate with the royal family of God. Another point in the uh, life of Noah is, um, is uh, his dealing with the criticism. If Sayyidina, you can give us points or practical points, how to deal with criticism. We all get criticized in many things we do, even not spiritually, in, in, in life in general. Uh, how we practically deal with criticism so we can feel peace? Uh, there are some advices here. I think number one, not to be defensive. Uh, many times when we are criticized, we become very defensive. We try to defend our you know, position. But no, we should not be very defensive. We should listen carefully to the criticism. And to examine ourselves, is there any truth uh, in the criticism or not? If there is a truth, I will accept it because that is God's way of correcting me. That's God's way of transforming me. That's how God is helping me to grow into his image. Mm -hmm. So actually I, I should be grateful and thankful that God sent me these people to criticize and edify me. If there is no truth in the criticism, then actually I should be objective in, in, in uh, uh, responding to this criticism, seeking also the edification of those who are criticizing me. And let me give you an example here of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
when they accused him and criticized him and they said he cast out demon by Baal Zabub, the head of the demons. Actually, the Lord responded in a very objective way. He did not become defensive at all, but he took the criticism and analyzed in a very uh, uh, reasonable way. And he told them, if Satan wants to spread and to establish his kingdom, he wouldn't actually cast out a demon. Because any kingdom divided against itself, it will be destroyed. So by reason, yes, it couldn't be Baal Zabub that is casting out demon in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he gave them another uh, reason. He told them, your children, the 12 disciples who were Jewish, that's why he said your children, you know, also casting out demon. Mm. If I have Baal Zabub with me, then how your children are casting out demons? So here the Lord used logic, reason, to respond to criticism. He, he wasn't defensive and he was seeking uh, their salvation. That's why he told them, but if I cast out demon with the finger of God, then the kingdom of God come upon you. Uh, and, and that is the, the main point here, how we should not lose our objectivity when somebody criticizes us. The feedback is very, very helpful if we listen to it and learn from it and allow ourselves to grow through the feedback and criticism. So to review, Sayyidina, I should take any criticism not in a personal way and I become defensive. I should look into the criticism and try to evaluate if this is true or not. And I will try to respond in an uh, objective way or in a positive way to, for the edification of the situation for him and for me. Exactly. Mm. exactly. We thank you, Sayyidina. I think Noah uh, is a great uh, character that needs more than one episode to talk about. We will invite you again, Sayyidna, to talk about Noah in the next episode. We thank you for being with us today, and we thank you for following us in this episode. And uh, if Noah was able to become a hero of faith with the help of God, he can, you can also be a hero of faith.